What's up, fam? Sheriff, come back at you. Hit you more with some more software security. I need you to slam that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit that bell so you know I'm coming back live. That's right. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> oh my goodness. That might be my dumbest one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, software engineers. I hope you're doing well today. Oh my gosh, it's warm in this hoodie. Ugh. From leap YouTuber to polo wearing professor again. Alrighty. Hope you're doing well today. <laughs> oh my goodness. What are we doing today? We are going to finish up the software security discussion. This is actually going to be a quick one today. Um, specifically talking about some Django security and some things I'd love for you to do with your team to talk about um, what security concerns you might need to worry about or just what things you should think about when you're building a Django project. So um, yeah, let's get into it. I um, We're still in the midst of grading quiz four. Um, so good. Um, quiz three is back. It should be in your dashboard. I'm getting the dashboard updated best I can. Um, if there's regrade requests, usual procedure goes on there. So it looks like people have seen it, but if you haven't go take a look and let's just go to the browser window for this. Cause I work, there's only a couple slides a day. So recapping the overall thought about software security is confidentiality, integrity, availability, making sure that only the right people see the data, the data hasn't changed, and it is always available. We then talked about in the last video about what do you do during each of the phases of development. So you can go back there and see what we do during requirements, specification, design, implementation, testing, and then maintenance. Now, um, the, the overall arching, you know, thesis here is security is not something that you just do at the end, right? It's not a wrapper. It's not something that you can just tack on, like you're the security person, go do it. It's something that has to be baked in and thought about at every level. You have to consistently work through it every phase of development to make sure your software is working well. Now, when we talked about the design portion of this, we talked about um, design trade-offs. Why would you choose one framework as opposed to another? Are there security concerns? Are there availability or uh, accessibility concerns, usability, performance? Well, Lots of people care about whether Django works well or not. Lots of apps use Django. So it, it follows that there's a lot of information out there that you can already get to about the security in Django. So some of the more common types of attacks that you might see on a website include cross-site scripting, SQL injection attacks, um, other ways that you get forms past other places. So Django actually has a page um, listed right here and it's also in the comments. Um, and also on the lecture notes on the on the pay on the course website, where you can go in and look at what all of these different types of attacks are and how they work. And it also says how Django just automatically protects you against some of these. So for instance, SQL injection attacks, this is this is the one that Bloomfield likes to talk about in 2150, the Bobby Tables example. Um, if that rings a bell for any of you, basically you submit your what is your username? You say my name is, you know, Mark, semicolon drop tables you know and you try and put some code into the username or the password so you hope that the that code is executed as opposed to it being filtered out well the normal mvc model does a really good job of filtering that out for you and django does it as well you can see it right here it talks about the sql injection protection and um you know without any extra effort um you don't have to worry about this now you could do something not intelligent and reopen this particular problem if you started handwriting your own queries and not actually working through the model but the basic idea is if you play by the rules you are going to protect be protected from all of these it talks about you know using ssl and https to encrypt um, the traffic remember we talked about encryption at rest and encryption in transit this is encryption in transit um yeah so uh, this is always something to worry about user uploaded content. If you're letting people upload an image, are you checking the file type? Are you checking its size? Are you checking, um, does it have a, any code payload in it? What sort of things are you doing if you're letting users give you, give you anything? Never trust your users, remember? So Django talks about all this, about how here's the stuff that we're going to provide for you right out of the box. Now, 
here's a here's a cool blog uh, post, and there's a there's a couple of these we're going to look through that says, hey, look, yeah, Django gives you this all out of the out of the box, but then there's some other tips and tricks you might think about. So enabling SSL, which it's harder for you to do on Heroku to do this, but it's something that you could potentially do. Running a firewall so only particular ports are open to the world. So this is kind of protecting at the the, the network level, the OS level. I love this one. Don't host the admin site at slash admin. Set up a custom URL for it. Yes, this is security through obscurity, but it will thwart all the script kitties scanning for admin. So there's two things I want to talk about here. The notion of security through obscurity is I'm going to protect something not necessarily by adding an extra layer of security around it. I'm just going to hide it. Um, security through obscurity is the keyhole for your front door isn't actually the, the keyhole. The keyhole is actually hidden behind a panel you know, on the other side of the door or something like that. Um, it's, it's not bad. It doesn't necessarily, you can't trust it fully to fix everything for you, but it's, it's something that will help. Now this point about the script kitties, if you never heard that phrase before, basically if a, um, a ne'er do well, uh, finds an exploit, they might write a script that they then release to the internet to then let people who just want to try out, see if they can hack into things, run that script and see what they can do. Well, those scripts are going to assume some things like base install locations and that sort of jazz. So if you move some of these potentially sensitive locations to different URLs, you're going to be protecting against it security through obscurity. So that's a cool idea. He also gives some tips in um, your settings file as to what things you should allow or or um, whether how cookies are allowed, so that, that's really cool. Um, and then he talks about running a tool called the safety check, which goes through and checks all of the different um, uh, packages that you are using to see if they're up to date. Um, this is a nice one, once your site is live, Sasha's Pony Checkup, which I have linked right here. And I'd love to see you try and run this on your site, by the way. You put in the URL right here, run checkup, and it will run some automated scripts on your Heroku website to see if you have any particular vulnerabilities. So I would love to, for, for your team to, to try that out. And then here's some more tips on um, making the Django uh, app secure itself. So, you know, using SSL, changing that URL, um, requiring stronger passwords, using two-factor, uh, two make sure you always update Django. Um, Django is a very, very popular package. Uh, lots of websites do use it. Lots of enterprise software uses it. So it is in everyone's best interest to make sure that people who build Django websites um, do a good job and they do their best to protect um, everyone's information. So these resources are available and a responsible software engineer knows to go and look for these resources and kind of work through them just to make sure you're covering your bases. Uh, do I expect you to do all of this for your project? No, I don't. There is some things I would like for you to do though. So for, so, it would be really great if I'm not going to pop it up. It, it would be really great if your team sometime during this next week uh, took a moment and did this activity we were going to do in class. Um, think of it as something I might ask later on maybe, but uh, think about this, you know, did you make any design choices that now knowing something about security, would you have made those decisions differently? I'm not saying you have to go fix them, but would you have made those decisions differently? Um, why did you make those choices? What was the reasoning that you made at the time? How might you change that choice now? Um, and also, I, I would love for you to run um, your app through that, that pony checker that I just, that link that I just gave you um, so that you can see what things pop up on your app. Does, you know, are there any security flaws that it finds? Anything obvious? My guess is that most of our apps are going to be probably pretty secure just because there's not, I mean, we're not doing a ton of, we're not building extremely large apps. It's possible you left some things open with the user login when you in, in incorporated the Google login stuff, but um, take a look, see what it says. Um, and also, you know, think about some of these other things like moving your admin page. How hard is that? Is that worth doing? You know, those are all things that you should really think about when you're, when you're building a, a uh, Django based website. So uh, like I said, it's a short one today. Um, wanted to finish up uh, on all this next week. Re remember we are going to do licensing on Tuesday and then we're going to do ethics on Wednesday and Thursday. And I'm going to do my best to have a synchronous lecture on Thursday 
hopefully some people come, um, but we'll see how that works out. So um, had some great meetings with some teams this week who wanted to show off their UI and get some feedback. I'm happy to do those meetings. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, Final Fantasy VII comes out tomorrow. Maybe I'll stream that this weekend. Who knows? Uh, but I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I will talk to you later. Bye.